Hi everybody, today I am taking a first look at the MXR 4K Android streaming video box. So this is my first time using something like this Android box. I've used Apple TV, I've used Roku's, I've used Amazon Fire TV. This is the first kind of off name brand that I've had experience with, but when I was offered an opportunity to test it out, I jumped on it because I've been hearing a lot about these Android boxes and hearing that they're good for things like running Kodi and Plex. So I thought I would jump at it and I've got it set up. Setup was really easy. Literally plug in the HDMI and the power and entered my Wi-Fi. That's as far as I've gotten at this point. I was waiting to share the rest of this with you guys. So let's get to it and see what it takes to get one of these up and running. What you see on the screen here is exactly what you get as soon as you plug this in and power it up. Everything in these boxes are empty. except for the My Apps. Haven't really had any time to look through them. Most of it's stuff I won't use on TV. Like why would I need maps? But hey, you know, maybe if you're using it in a car or something. One thing I did want to point out was in the settings. So everything you can see is really easy to move around. But coming in here, you'll see that you have eight gigabytes of storage already nearly half of that is taken up um, so I think removing some of the apps that are installed will help free up some more space you're not going to use it for much more than just downloading apps there's definitely not enough space to store any movies or what have you however the box itself and I will show you the physical box at the end of this review. Um, it has multiple USB slots so that you can add additional storage as well as you can see a spot for an SD card. So it doesn't say the booklet with the instructions is very sparse and it's not giving a lot of information so it doesn't say what the limitation is on the size of the SD card so you might just throw some at it and uh, see how much it can handle hopefully some of the bigger cards like 128 because that would make this box very usable for storing uh, videos if you don't have a network set up like I do in order to do that so that's just one thing I wanted to point out because 8 gigs tends to fill up pretty fast. I think every box, everything should come with a minimum of 32 these days, but nobody listens to me, so. You can see here some information on setting this up for DLNA. I can't read it, um, but I'm guessing you just scan the QR code to maybe download that app. Not sure what device mess is. I'm going to guess that's messages. Language is pretty self explanatory. Got the network set up. I'm using Wi Fi. You can use Ethernet. Time and date settings. Sound can change your display settings. Reset it. Update the system. Um, I'm not sure seriously what, how the update's gonna work. Since this is a no-name box, I don't know if I'm gonna have to sideload um, Android TV updates. We'll have to see as that goes down. Um, in the future. See the only 
quote unquote app that is on here is an install of Kodi. I believe it's an older install, so I will um, be deleting that. Actually, I'll do that right now. There is a thing right now where Cody is not wanting people to sell boxes that they are selling as Cody boxes. Um, however, you know, you're free to add Cody to any box you buy. They don't have any problems with that. They just don't want people profiting off of their hard work since it's open source. So I prefer to start with a fresh install doing my own setup of Cody. The one that was on here, I took a peek at it. It had some installed add-ons, things like that. I am very particular about my Cody usage, so I try to control um, very particularly the apps and add-ons that I use with that. So that is why I have deleted it. And then I think if you're going to use this for developing apps, you have the opportunity to use these settings. One of the things that I did think was pretty cool about this box is the remote control, and I will again, later when I show you the box, show you the remote, has a mouse button on it. So when you hit the mouse button, it puts it in mouse mode. So you can use the buttons or the circular control button to move your pointer around and <laughs> you can see it's not very fluid. But if you want to get down here to the home buttons, this is literally the only way to do it. The remote will not let you do it on its own. Put it back into remote minute settings. All right, let's go and explore some of these things. I'm not really sure the setup on this, so I think I'll go in here and just add the Play Store. So, I in the past have had, or actually the TV that I am demonstrating this on is a Sony Google TV, which they no longer make. But because of that, I do have some apps that I have downloaded and used in the past. So hopefully, um, those will work fine as well with this box. Let's see how I can navigate this. All right, so we want to start with Cody. There we go. Interesting, I'll have to get this Cody remote. Oh, may not work. I'll have to see if there is a corresponding remote. I have mostly iOS devices, so I don't do a lot of stuff through the Google Play Store daily. Um, I'm not sure that this remote would work on iOS, so we'll skip that. especially on apps like this it is sometimes hard to figure out where the remotes taking you and why I can see where the mouse would come in handy
no matter how you cut it, there's no real easy way to navigate around this without clicking a billion times. Thankfully, we won't have to do this very often. I don't know if the Google Play Store is actually notating that I am on a TV device. Some of these apps do not seem like apps you would use. Uh, it thinks this is a tablet. I was just curious to see if they had a TV category. I'm going to guess everything's going to live in entertainment. So that's a good start for installing video watching apps, which is for me mainly what I'm going to do with this device. Well, that wraps up my look at the software on the MXR 4K Android streaming device. Next, I'll be taking a look at the hardware and the remote that is included with the box. Okay, I just wanted to take a quick look at the remote and the box that you get when you order this MXR 4K Android streaming box. This is the actual physical box. It's about the size, well, maybe a little larger than an Apple TV um, or a Roku, but you can see that it, it has a lot of ports for you. So you've got three USB ports here, an SD card slot. I'm not really sure what this slot is here uh, in the instruction manual. Doesn't really tell you very much. The back has your Ethernet, which I did go ahead and plug mine into the Ethernet. It has your power, it has your HDMI, and you can see it has a SPDIF, another USB slot, and an AV input and that's pretty much it um, they really did think about expandability for this um, probably because it doesn't have a lot built into it the remote is very old school very basic you have your colored buttons but I don't think they really work like your colored buttons do on most normal remotes they're just for volume playing pausing um, you've got a number pad this is the mouse button that lets you switch it into mouse mode, which you need for apps that won't work with just the movable inputs. What I'd like to find out is um, if I plug in a USB mouse and a USB keyboard, if it will work. So I'm going to try, I have a Harmony keyboard that I'm going to try to plug into this and see if I can use that as my input device because if I can, I may ditch this remote. It's pretty crappy. And there you have it. First look at the hardware and the remote that comes along with the MXR 4K box. Please feel free to leave me any comments and any feedback below. I will try to get back to you as soon as I possibly can. And I hope you enjoyed this video first look. <laughs>